Hello folks, tonight I am going after the East Vale Nebula. And it, it seems like I was just there, but actually a couple of weeks ago I captured Pickering's Triangle, which is the next door neighbor of this nebula. They're all part of the same supernova, so I expect processing to be the, exactly the same. But right now I am fighting a lot of clouds, and it's really hazy up there, and my mean readout for oxygen um, is about twice as high as it normally is, even more so. So I don't really know if I'm going to be able to keep this data. I'll just have to see when I'm done if, if it's workable. But right now, with a four minute exposure and my gain and offset at 75.15, let's see. There's the nebula right there. So it comes in pretty bright. Oxygen's not too bad, even though the moon is full right now. Um, it, it's, it's, it's pretty bright, and it's a perfect fit. I actually did this last year with my wide field scope, but now with my big refractor and a reducer, um, I've got a little more focal length, and it's a perfect fit. And check out how my HA looked like so far. This is about four hours and maybe 40 minutes, I think. It was just such a perfect fit. I wanted to, to do this, you know, and, and my camera was already rotated perfectly. So um, I think it's going to look pretty cool when I'm done. So we'll see how this goes. It, I just hope this data is going to be usable. Maybe it'll get better as the night goes on. We'll see. So I'll be back. So my guiding is not too bad on a hazy night like this. I am pointing to the east about mm, 65 degrees high. 0.82. Okay, I'll settle for that. I know I'll get round stars with that. Okay, I'll be back again. All right, well, I am done capturing data. I captured data across two nights and captured over nine hours. I, I probably could have gone longer, but this is a pretty bright object. And I I already ran a histogram on my HA. I've got over four hours of HA and over five hours of oxygen. And um, I, I had to run um, a dynamic background extraction and an automatic background extraction on my oxygen. Um, and you can see I still have brightness in the corners. Now, normally flats would take care of brightness in the corners. It's called vignetting, as it did with my HA, but my oxygen is so far gone. It had brightness all the way around, like I always mention in my video. That's just the way my oxygen turns out, and I think it's a result. It was even worse this time as a result of, I think it was the haze, the moon at 99.2. 9%, uh, massive, or very bright green light um, behind my house, my neighbor's house. It's so their backyard light, very bright. So um, this is how my oxygen turned out. And I probably could have done a better job on my, my background extraction, but sometimes I tend to just race through it. And this is going to come back to bite me later. So, oh, well, let's, let's take a look at my combines right now. And by the way, July has been um, a terrific month. And even as I record um, this video, I'm capturing more data on my next target. And I took a break from the uh, butterfly nebula that you might have seen in the previous video because the oxygen is not strong. And um, with the moon out there so bright and a little bit hazy, I, 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 I didn't want to continue on that one for a while. The, the, the East Vale Nebula is so bright it can fight through the, the problem skies I have right now. And, and that's why I switched for now. But here's my, here's one combine. Um, this was my, this was a combine where I put HA in red and oxygen in green and blue. And I divided green with 20% HA and 80% uh, oxygen, and if you see uh, my previous video, I think, which one was that? Maybe it was the Pickering's Triangle, I'm not sure. But one of those, I think where I mentioned pixel math in the title of the video, if you want to see how that's done. And um, 
here's another combine where I added a luminance layer to it, and it didn't really look that good, and I'm not sure, I, I think I screwed something up with it because I went back to do it later after I was already done processing, and it looked a lot better the second time around. So I think this was just a, I, I must have screwed up a, a parameter on this one. And this is another combine where I actually ended up using this one um, because if you compare this one to that one, I actually increased the curves on the oxygen to make it more bright. And you can see it kind of helped this area here because um, in the end, the my final processing was showing the nebula to be mostly red and I, I didn't get a, enough a different tones in it so I I actually went back to redo it from scratch and uh, it, it helped when I boosted the curves on the oxygen and let me show you the the final result here so the one on the left this is this is the version where I I didn't boost the oxygen before the combine and you can see this area here it, it, it just, it was, this whole nebula to me looked a little too red. I didn't have enough different tones in it. And the one on the right is where I did boost the the oxygen before the combine. And, and I think this is the cool section here. If you look closely at that compared to what I've got on the left, I think I'm glad I actually went back to redo it. it I think it looks better on the right than on the left. So... That's all I've got. I, I felt I, I probably raced through this processing. I probably could have done even better. And I think because the skies weren't that good, I didn't really pick up. There should have been more nebulosity going on around here where you only see a little faint trace of it. So I, I, I could have fixed that if I just, like I said, captured more data or probably with better skies and not, not capturing oxygen when the moon was at 99.9%. So, anyway, uh, thanks for uh, tuning in, and I will see you later.